सहना सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मिश्रावह ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ वी आर स्टडिंग द कमेंट्री ऑफ भगवत पद शंकराचार्य देवा ऑन द फिफ्थ एंड सिक्स्थ सूत्र सिक्स्थ सूत्र ऑफ द ब्रह्म सूत्र now here the standpoint of pradhana the standpoint of sankhya philosophers is given that pradhana is the cause of this universe now further just before the next sutra begins as an introduction to the next sutra bhagavad pada shankaracharya says If now the Purva Paksha, that is Sankhya philosophers, say this, what? Achetane api pradhane bhavati atma shabdah. Atmanah sarvartha karitvat. Yatha ragnyah sarvartha karini vrityay. भवति आत्म शब्दो ममात्मा भद्रसेन इति सो दिस इज द स्टैंड पॉइंट ऑफ सांख्य फिलोसोफर्स दे से अचेतने अपी इवन दो इट इज इनसेंशियंट और इवन दो इट इज नॉन कॉन्शियस प्रधाना एज फर एज प्रधाना इज कंसर्न Bhavati Atma Shabdah. We can use the word Atma referring to Pradhana, even though it is an insentient entity or non-conscious entity. Why Atmanah Sarva Artha Karitvat? Because Atma. fulfills all purposes sarva artha artha means purposes it fulfills or it leads to all purposes and because it leads atma atma's purposes means it leads to all the purposes of the atma so that is why pradhana can be called atma because it it can lead or it can fulfill all the purposes of atmanah of atman yatha just like ragnyah sarvartha karini vrittye so just like the raja or the king king appoints vrittya servant servant who will fulfill all the purposes sarvartha karini so in case of that sevak or the servant or the vritya the king uses the word atma atma means self atma means self so king uses the word atma to denote how that person is doing so much for him or the king so it is generally seen that the king says mama atma bhadrasena iti bhadrasena is the name of say bhadrasena is the name of the servant then the king says oh the servant is mama atma is my atma that means without the servant what will i do even otherwise nowadays also the bosses generally they will say without this person what can i do this person is my left hand this person is my right hand this person is my brains all these people say 
because they are depending upon a person. So because this is the argument of the Sankhya philosophers that because Pradhana, it fulfills all the purposes of Atman. That is why the word Atma can be used appropriately to denote Pradhana. Pradhanam hi purushasya atmano bhoga apavargav kurvat apakaroti ragnya iva bhritya ha sandhi vigrahadishu vartamana. So here he says Pradhanam hi purushasya atmano bhoga apavargav kurvat upakaroti. So here again, this is the standpoint of Sankhya philosophers that it is Pradhana which Purushasya Atmanaha Bhoga Apak Vargo Kurvad Upakaroti. That it is Pradhana which helps Upakaroti in the fulfillment of both bhoga or experience and moksha or apavarga moksha moksha so it helps in both it helps in the bhoga and it also helps in moksha both the things it helps what helps pradana helps who does it help? The individual soul, Purushasya Atma, Atmanaha. So the soul is helped, Atma is helped. Kurvad Upakaroti, it helps. Just like Ragnya Iva, just like the king who is helped by Bhrityaha, by one's servant or employee, one could say. Sandhi Vigrahadishu Vartamanaha. So the Vartamanaha being present or handling, handling Sandhi. Sandhi means when a Raja or a king enters into an agreement, political agreement with another king. And Vigraha means when a king enters into conflict with another king. In all these cases, in all these cases, the Bhritya, it could be a minister, it could be a military commander, whoever that is, a Bhritya is present, a servant of the king is present, an employee of the king is present. And so, though the servant is not the Raja, not the king, the servant acts on the authority of the king. So there is the concept of power of attorney also. The authority is given to the servant, to the, to the ambassador. Just like any country, it has various ambassadors across the world. So that country is represented in that particular place by the ambassador. Similarly, here also the king is represented by a servant of the king, an employee of the king, who helps the king in agreement and also conflict. Athava eka eva atma shabdaha chetana achetana vishayo bhavishyati bhutatma indriyatma iticha prayoga darshanat. So this could be, this was one kind of logic. The logic that though Pradhana is insentient, it is not conscious because it fulfills the purposes, artha, of the jiva, of the individual soul, individual atman. That is why Pradhana can be called Atman. Just like a servant who is fulfilling the purposes or doing help to the king can be called Atma. 
so the king kind of identifies with that person and identifies that person with one's own self similarly pradhana also can be identified as atma that is the argument of the sankhya philosophers but they also give an alternative argument athava or just like when we take examinations in the schools or in higher studies mostly in schools we get the question paper and there will be three questions then the fourth question will have one question and then will be big or there will be another question so you you have to attempt the fourth question but there are two questions so either of them you can attempt similarly here there is a different line of argument which is being presented by the sankhya philosophers what is that argument athava or it could be like this what ek eva atma shabda hai chetana achetana vishayo bhavati that one word which is atman the word atman could be the object of both insentient entity and also sentient entity it could be the object of both sentient entity and insentient entity so it could be it could be referring to chetana it could also be referring to achetana bhutatm indriya atma cha prayog darshanat because darshanat because of the seeing that because we observe that prayoga it is used what is used the usage like bhutatma indriya atma so we all, always see usage like bhutatma bhutatma so bhutatma means atma which is present or atma which is present in the five elements pancha bhuta indriya atma atma which is there in the sense organs so like that we do definitely see prayoga the usage the usage of the word atma even with respect to things which are insentient so that one word could actually mean atman atman means it could mean that ultimate principle it could mean the ultimate principle yatha just like ek eva jyoti hi shabd hai kratu jwalana vishaya hai another example is given so we have to just remind that this is all the argument of sankhya philosophers yatha ek eva so this again just like one word alone jyoti shabd hai the word jyoti is used for referring to kratu kratu means sacrifice kratu means sacrifice <laughs> and also to mean jwalana jwalana means fire so this jyoti is used for a particular sacrifice the word denoting a sacrifice and it is also used to denote fire so similarly atman could be used to denote chetana conscious or in sentient and achetana insentient or unconscious tatra kutah etad atma shabdadi shabdat ikshate he gaunatva miti ata uttaram pathati so so how can we say that by using etad atma shabdat by using the word atma ikshate he gaunatva miti that ikshati that particular uh, action that particular action ikshati that is thinking or contemplation or seeing that gaunatva miti 
that it is figurative how can we say how can we say that the the quality or ability of ikshana is figurative because atma shabd has been uh, atma word has been used ata uttaram pathati till now till now it is the argument of the sankhya philosophers then shankaracharya is saying atah now therefore uttaram pathati we are reading or we study the uttaram our response to this objection we study our response to this objection so that studying is now starting from the seventh sutra seventh sutra what is seventh sutra tannishthasya mokshopadeshat tannishthasya mokshopadeshat so tannishthasya moksho upadeshat moksha upadeshat this is the seventh sutra of the brahma sutras so here what does it mean tannishthasya tad nishthasya tad means brahman the ultimate reality one who is focused on brahman is called tad nishtha tan nishtha or brahma nishtha so because of the brahma nishtha person of the brahma nishtha person moksha upadeshat the teaching teaching who is teaching the scriptures are teaching that is the vedas are teaching upadeshat because it has been told by the vedas what has been told moksha mukti shravanat achetana pradhana aikya gnanena tad asambhavat so mukti shravanat shravanat the vedas are talking about it the vedas are telling about it what are they telling about mukti they are talking about mukti so moksha upadeshat means the moksha moksha complete end of repeated birth and death complete attaining completely attaining bliss or conversely completely removing all kinds of misery or suffering so moksha that is moksha so moksha upadeshat this moksha has been talked of by the vedas moksha upadeshat also because this has been talked of by the vedas for whom for brahmanishtha people who are established in brahman and also want to attain moksha for such people moksha upadeshat so what is moksha upadeshat achetana pradhana aikya gnanena tad asambhavat so moksha which has been told in the scriptures or in the vedas it has been very clearly told in the vedas that moksha is the parama purushartha moksha is the parama purushartha that means the ultimate goal of life aim of life of a person so if a person according to sankhya philosophy understand pradhana to be one if somebody understands pradhana achetana pradhana achetana pradhana means insentient or unconscious pradhana and to for that pradhana to be one then that pradhana uh, if it is understood to be one because it is achetana it is unconscious or it is insentient that pradhana cannot become one because that it cannot become one because then pradhana itself is there will be different kinds of realities 
when Sankhya philosophy is accepted. So, Tadasambhavad, that is why it is not possible. What is not possible? That Pradhana becomes the cause of the universe. That is not possible. And so, this moksha, this teaching of salvation is not a correct word. Freedom, moksha, teaching of freedom is there in the Vedas. So, that is what is told. So, that is why now Atta Uttaram Pathati. Now, we are studying the, we will study or we will read the Uttaram, the response to this kind of a objection by Sankhya philosophers. So, this as we have already seen, once again I will remind that this tradition of positing or presenting the opponent's viewpoints is called Purvapaksha. And this tradition gives much credibility to the philosophy which is thus opposed because then that philosophy is able to establish itself in the face of all criticism or opposition by other philosophical schools. So when Advaita Vedanta, such objections come, the purpose of Acharya is to, it could be any Acharya, suppose it is Dvaita Vedanta, then Madhva Acharya, is to hold on to the original teaching and original teaching of their philosophical standpoint and then they set aside all other teachings, all other philosophical thoughts. So, to hold on to that, that is nishta, that is the focus, the holding on to a particular standpoint is the focus. That focus leads to the teaching or instruction of moksha. So, brahmanishtasya athava tannishtasya moksha upadesha. Because the person who is established, that person will get the upadesha or the teaching of moksha. So, if for example in Advaita Vedanta, we say Jiva Brahma Aikya, the identity of the individual soul, which actually there is no individual soul, it is because of Ajnana or ignorance or Maya or Adhyasa or Avidya, one feels as though there is intellect, individual soul. So, the Aikya of Brahman and Atman, Jiva Brahma Aikya, that is the ultimate knowledge and that is what is Moksha. So, similarly, if following Sankhya standpoint, one were to think of Achetana Pradhana Aikya, the identity of the entity called Pradhana and Achetana, insentience, that would not lead to, or the knowledge of the identity of insentience and Pradhana will not lead one to Moksha. That is what we have to understand. Now, now the Bhashya or the commentary of Shankaracharya Deva on the seventh sutra for which he has given an introductory commentary which we saw. Na pradhanam achetanam atma shabdat alambanam bhavitum arahati. So here, Pradhanam achetanam atma shabda shabda alambanam na bhavitum arahati. The principle of Sankhya philosophy called Pradhana, which is insentient, which is not conscious, which is not conscious, that Atma Shabda Alambanam. So that particular Pradhana, which is not conscious, Pradhana is never conscious. To say that that unconscious Pradhana is Alambanam, is the basis of Atma Shabda, the word Atman. Na bhavitu marati. It cannot be said. Or 
द वर्ड आत्मन कैन नॉट बी द बेसिस सॉरी प्रधाना विच इज इनसेंशियंट कैन नॉट बी द बेसिस ऑफ द वर्ड आत्मन हाउ कैन बी समथिंग विच इज इनसेंशियंट बी द बेसिस ऑफ समथिंग विच इज सेंशियंट हाउ कैन समथिंग विच इज नॉन कॉन्शियस be the basis of something which is conscious it is not possible so that is why pradhana cannot be the pradhana's basis cannot be uh, sorry pradhana cannot be the basis of the word atma the word atma so chandogya upanishad is cited here sixth chapter 14th section third mantra sa atma so there sa atma that is atma so that is atma can never be uh, dependent on or it can never be connected on or pradhana can never be the basis of this phrase that atma iti prakritam सद अनिमानम आदाय तत्वमसी श्वेतकेतो इति चेतनस्य श्वेतकेतो हो मोक्षयितव्यस्य तन्निष्ठाम उपदिश्य आचार्यवान पुरुषो वेद तस्य तावदेव चिरम यावत् न विमोक्ष्ये अथ संपत्स्ये इति मोक्ष उपदेशात सो अर्लियर आल्सो वी हैव सीन स आत्मा sa atma so that sa atma there it has been told that the atma is the subtle of the subtle it is the subtlest of the subtlest so it is anima it is subtle iti prakritam sa atma iti prakritam prakritam means having said described or explained iti prakritam having thus explained sad animanam adaya also telling sad animanam adaya also telling about the subtle nature of the ultimate reality which is sad which is sad means always existing always existing eternally existing so that is sat eternal existence so after telling the or after presenting the subtle sat existence and basing on it the upanishad says tattvamasi shvetaketo you are that o shvetaketo you are that इति चेतनस्य इन दिस मैनर चेतनस्य श्वेत केतो हो द कॉन्शियस श्वेत केतु और द सेंशियंट श्वेत केतु मोक्षयितव्यस्य मोक्षयितव्यस्य मींस वन हु इज केपेबल और वन हु वन हु हैज टू अटेन मोक्षा सो हियर Shweta Ketu is made capable to attain moksha. Shweta Ketu, Shweta Ketu is made capable of attaining moksha. Tan nishtham upadishya. And though here Shweta Ketu is being made ready so that he he can attain moksha. even though that is happening here that shweta ketu tannishtham upadishya after teaching <clears throat> one's affiliation or one's focus or involvement with the path of moksha so shweta ketu is also taught moksha and also how to be one pointedly devoted to that tannishtham upadishya 
Acharyavan Purusho Veda. Again from the Chandogya Upanishad. Again from the sixth chapter. So this is taught Acharyavan Purusho Veda. The person, the person who has an Acharya, a teacher, that person knows. What does that person know? Tasya Tavadeva Chiram Yavan Vimokshaye Atha Sampadse. So, Tasya Tavadeva Chiram. Chiram means delay. Tavadeva. Only up to that there is delay. Yavatna as long as Vimokshaye Atha Sampadse. So, the Purusha or Acharyavan Purusha means a person who is having a teacher, who is dedicated to a teacher. That person, for that person, Mukti is only so much delayed as much as Bhimokshe. That means as long as that person does not give up the body. Vimokshe. Here Vimokshe means getting free from the body. Atha Sampatsye. And so the moment that person uh, gives up the body or the moment the person's body falls, that person becomes Brahman. Iti Moksha Upadeshat. In this manner, Moksha has been instructed. The idea is a person who has a teacher and that person has an involvement with or the focus, one pointed attention towards what moksha, then that person will not have much delay in attaining moksha. The moment the body falls, that person will become mukta. Why, why is that person even after attaining the knowledge or something, why is that person continuing because of some karma which that body has to be a body has to do. So, that is why this Brahman Vishnu. Brahman is person, person has to uh, attain, he will or she will attain Tavadeva Chiram. There is only that much delay. Delay of what? As long as the body falls, till then, only till then, one has to wait. Once the body falls, then that person also immediately will attain to the Sat or the eternal state. Eternal state. Iti Moksha Upadeshat. That Moksha has been taught here. <clears throat> Yadi hi achetanam pradhanam sakshabda vachyam tadasi iti grahayet mukshum chetanam santam achetano asi iti tada viparita vadi shastram bushasya anarthayaye anarthaye ti apramanam syat natu nirdosham shastra pramanam kalpayitum yukta. It's a here what is told. Yadi hi achetanam pradhanam. So, such shabda vachyam. If uh, pradhana is the meaning of the word sat, such shabda vachyam. Pradhana is the meaning of the word sat. Pradhana, what kind of pradhana? Pradhana which is unconscious. So, if unconscious or insentient pradhana, is the meaning of the word sat, then tadasi iti grahayet. And also tadasi, tattvam asi. So tattvam asi. So tattvam asi means you are that. In that, that that, tat, if tat is considered to be pradhana, because Brahman is considered to be Tat by Advaita Vedantin. Brahman is the cause of the universe. Similarly, what is the cause of the universe according to Sankhya philosophy? Pradhana is the cause of the universe. So then, Tad Asi, 
you are that. That is, Pradhana is that. So if we were to consider that the Sat, Sadeva Somya Idamagra Asit, in the beginning of the universe, or the before the creation of the universe, there was only Sat. There was only this eternally existence, that principle, eternally existent principle. If that is the case, then Pradhana will be that. According to Sankhya philosophy, Pradhana will be denoted by the word Sat. If that is the case, then Tad Asi Iti Grahayat. One has to also hold that when we say you are that, there that also is Pradhana. That that also is Pradhana. Mumukshum Chetanam. So a person who is Mumukshu, Mumukshu means one who desires moksha. Santam achetano asi iti tada. So a person who desires moksha is also conscious. So if we were to say tad asi, you are that. So and then that becomes pradhana. Who are we addressing in this manner? You are that. And if the, that becomes pradhana, that means you are pradhana, which is pradhana is insentient, unconscious. So why are we holding on to this insentient, unconscious? Because that is what Sankhya philosophers also say. They say that pradhana is insentient, unconscious. So if we accept that, that pradhana is the entity which is explained by the word or pointed to or referred to by the word, Sat, then this funny situation will arise, ludicrous situation will arise where a person is told that you are something unconscious. How can a person, Purusha, a person or an individual become unconscious? No, the person is very much conscious. But that person is told that you, uh, that person is told that you are Pradhana. What is Pradhana? It is unconscious. So that is like a very, uh, very undesirable event. Undesirable situation. We don't want to tell a conscious person that in reality you are unconscious. That we can, we can, we need not uh, say. Uh, that will, that will only create problem. That will create confusion. So, then what we do? We, we don't say that. So, that means that position can be avoided only when we accept that the cause of the universe or the ultimate reality is something which is sentient or conscious. So, here, Mumukshum Chetanam Santam Achetano Asiti so if we were to say tattva masi in that the tat refers to pradhana yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, if we were to say, say Pradhana is the uh, cause of the universe. So, we were to say, just like we say, Tattva Masi, there Tat means Brahman. So, then what will happen? Tat will refer to Pradhana. So then it is like the Shweta Ketu is being told by his father that look here, you are actually that insentient principle. How can a sentient person become insentient? So insentient. How can a conscious person become unconscious? That will lead to a very uh, ludicrous or a very uh, laughable situation, which is a funny situation. So there it will be. Mumukshum Chetanam Santam Achetano Asi Iti. So it is like telling a mumukshu, a person who wants moksha, who is conscious, telling that person 
that oh you are unconscious tada viparaita vadi shastram and so if like that then this shastra which is like telling so if we were to accept your logic then it will mean that this tat means pradhana and then pradhana will tell that a person who is conscious is actually unconscious then this viparita vadi uh, a shastra which is telling something which is viparita viparita means which is uh, taking one to a wrong conclusion or uh, telling something which is dangerous to a person which is uh, not desirable uh, to a person that purushasya anarthayayeti so that will anarthayeti so what will it will become it will become it will cause some kind of anartha or some kind of unhappy circumstance or anartha means it, it will bring some kind of uh, misery or uh, suffering to the person involved to the person so it is misguiding it is mis basically if we take that tat is pradhana then the shastra will be misguiding the uh, person and so uh, syat and it will become apramanam syat shastra will not become a means of valid knowledge it will become a means of invalid knowledge apramana natu nirdosham shastram apramanam kalpayitum yuktam so it is not yuktam logical it does not stand to reason to imagine kalpayitum imagine or posit nirdosham shastram apramana so it is not proper it is not plausible to make this nirdosham shastram means this innocent shastra shastra which has not done any mistake to think of it or to present it as apramanam as a means of invalid knowledge or a not as a means of valid knowledge so also yadi cha agnyasya satao satah mumukshu ho achetanam anatmanam atma iti upadishet pramana bhutam shastram sa shraddha danataya anda golangula nyayena tada atma drishtim na parityajet tad vyatiriktam cha atmanam na pratipadyeta tatha sati purusharthat vihanyeta anartham cha richhet so here it is given the logic is given what is the logic yadi cha agnyasya satah mumukshu ho so achetanam anatmanam atma iti upadishet pramana bhutam shastram so the shastra that is the vedas or the upanishads which are considered pramana means of valid knowledge so shabda pramana if this shastra or the vedas de agnyasya satah mumukshu ho the ignorant mumukshu mumukshu is ignorant because not yet realized the ultimate nature not yet mumukshu has not yet realized one's true nature that is atman or brahman so that ignorant mumukshu to that ignorant mumukshu achetanam anatmanam atma iti upadishet if this means of valid knowledge which is called the vedas if it were to teach or instruct achetanam insentient anatmanam not self atma iti as self so if it were to teach that this insentient non conscious not self is actually self like that if it were to teach sa shraddha dana then that that kind of a teaching or that kind of a instruction will be shraddha dana taya andha golangula nyayena tadatma drishtim na parityajet so if somebody teaches like that then the person who is taught the mumukshu because the mumukshu has shraddha 
or faith in the vedas the mumukshu will then what will the mumukshu do atma drishtim na parityajet that person will tyad vyatiriktam cha atmanam na pratipadyet that person will not give up atma drishti in anatma that means that person will see not self as self non atman as atman because that person believes mumukshu believes in the vedas and if vedas were to point out that oh this cause of the universe or the ultimate nature is insentient unconscious non conscious pradana then that will cause a conf- confusion in the mumukshu and that mumukshu what that mumukshu will do that mumukshu will not give up the idea that the not self is the self so in the not self tada atma drishtim na parityajet will not parityajet give up atma drishtim in the atma drishti means seeing it as self what not self so that person will not stop seeing not self as self and tad vyatiriktam and also chatmanam na pratipadyet also will not pratipadyet will not understand or grasp or apprehend what atma self which is tad vyatiriktam which is different from non self so if this were to be continued that pradhana is the thing which is referred by the word sat then what will happen a person who is believing in the vedas wanting to attain moksha that person will then because of one shraddha in the vedas will not give up seeing not self as self and also will not see self as true self and that will happen tatha sati purusharthat vihanyata anartham charichet and if that happens then purusharthat parama purusharthat one is vihanyata one will be misled or diverted or for one person this ultimate goal in life that is moksha will be destroyed anartham charichet and that person will lead to a disastrous end that will be a disaster for that here there is a nyaya referred to gola anda gola angula nyaya what is nyaya nyaya is a maxim the closest translation in english is maxim that means a kind of formula which you can apply the another one example is anda gaja nyaya so just like blind men and an elephant so there are, we all know the story there are many blind men they are surrounding an elephant they touch different parts of the elephant and say that elephant is something one person touches the maybe the stomach and say so oh, it is like a wall another person touches the um, tail says it is like broom some people touch something and everyone has got their own opinion because no one can see the elephant completely because everyone is blind so that kind of a logic is used in various places anda gaja nyaya similarly here anda golangula nyaya what is this anda golangula nyaya so there is a small story so what happened a person was going in the forest and this person was there are according to bhartri hari there are four kind of people four kinds of people four types of people one people one first type are people who do good to others without expecting any return they don't get anything in return they just do good to others second type of people they do good to others in return for something they expect something from them third type of people they do bad to others they cause harm to others because then by causing harm they will get something they will get something in return so suppose somebody is working in an office two people are there lined up for promotion if one person uh, has to quit the job then other person immediately will get promotion like that so some bad thing they will do to get something 
and the fourth bhartri hari says is a category of people whom cannot be described means it is a wonderful category of people what kind of people they do bad to others just for the heck of it they will not get anything out of it they'll just do bad so like that this person was there this person our person he who was going in the forest was like that the person will do bad just for the fun of it and so that person saw that in the forest there is a blind man and that blind man wants to go to his village some more that person has wandered and come to this place and wants to go to village and now blind man saw this person and obviously that blind man was uh, forest so forest obviously there is no defined pathways in forest so the blind man was moving here and there and so this person asked oh ho sir why are you here what has happened to you hmm? what what so we have to remember that causing suffering is fun to this person so what has happened to you why are you in misery here then immediately that blind man listening to some kind of voice some kind of sound that person said oh ho ho see i want to go to my village but now i am unable to go because i am i have come out from my familiar territory blind people can walk in familiar territory but he has come out of that so i don't know so uh, so you please you i have heard your voice and i am so grateful please show me the way now what does this person do he finds that there is a bull there in that forest there is a bull so this person what does he do he says you see it is very easy i will just hand you something you just hold on to that okay so this bull he takes the bull and that bull is very raging bull the bull is already otherwise why it will be in forest if it is in forest means already something it is it is raging it is very angry etc so this person what does he do he takes the tail of that person that requires lot of courage also by the way takes the tail of that uh, bull and hands it over to the blind man so now the blind man has the tail of the bull which is completely angry in one's hand so if you have seen that matador and all that bull fight and all you will know that the bull will keep on circling so that tail man has got this the, 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 the blind man has got this tail and that now the blind man will also circle that's what anda golangula nyaya that is that is the anda go langula nyaya langula means tail go means cow here it means bull so anda the blind man is given the tail of a raging bull so like that it will happen that means a person is already suffering by agnana ignorance and you tell them that something which is insentient is the cause of the universe then it will be like handing over the tail of a raging bull to a blind man who is seeking directions to his home so that is the maxim here so the idea is anartham charichet that cannot be that cannot be the uh, thing that we cannot do like that that is the idea so therefore we cannot accept that uh, the word sat means pradhana we cannot accept that om shanti 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 hari om tat sat shri ram krishna arpanam astu शुभरात्रि